Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to class. Um, I hope you all had a really good Easter. Hopefully you had a good weekend in general. Maybe you got a chance to see some family through social distancing or through Zoom or Google Meet or something. But in other words, I just hope you had a really good weekend. Um, we're going to get back into some notes here, um, looking at a new unit on social structure. Now you've already done a reading. Um, about social structure and you had a worksheet to fill out. So hopefully these notes are somewhat review, um, but we're gonna get into it today nonetheless. So looking at social structure, what does that mean? Well, in other words, social structure means how we organize our society, how we keep society structured. And social structure is really, really important because social structure makes patterns of human interaction predictable. So what does this mean, making things predictable? Well, let's think of an example. Um, let's think about school, or as school was a month ago, right? School and the structure of school was very, very predictable. We knew the role of a teacher, you knew the role of a student, you knew the role of principals and guidance counselors. And every single person in that school had a specific job to do. And so it was very, very organized and very, very structured. In fact, you could have gone out onto the street on the Carl Road, picked a random person and asked them, hey, what do you think is going on in that school right now? And they might not have known anything about to sales, but they probably could have predicted that there was a teacher standing up going over notes and there were students sitting down taking those notes and learning and there were probably tests being taken and activities being conducted and they would have been right because they could predict those behaviors because school was structured and organized and so looking at that example of school we can expand that out and think of society as a whole society is very organized and very structured um, and so having it structured makes it predictable so the definition of social structure is the network of interrelated statuses and roles that guide our human interactions. So if we're gonna use the word status and we're gonna use the word role in a definition, we should probably define each of those terms. So status is defined as the socially defined position that a person holds in a group or in a society. In other words, a status can be considered a label. Um, you all right now listening to this lecture are occupying the status of students that's your label right now and i would be occupying the status of teacher that would be my defined position at this time right so i'm acting as the teacher you're acting as the student um but that by no means is your only status you know yeah, right now you might be acting as a student, but later on you might um, be playing video games and you're gonna be acting in a different way and occupying a new status. Or maybe you're going to be you know, hanging out with your brother or sister and you're gonna be occupying a new status. So I'm gonna go over some more examples of status here in a second, but just remember in the back of your mind, a status is also known as a label. All right, now with each status comes specific behaviors that are expected with that status. Those behaviors are known as roles. So a role is the behavior expected of someone occupying a particular status. So as we said before, I'm occupying the status of teacher. What are the behaviors expected of a teacher? Well, the teacher should lecture, like I'm doing right now. The teacher should make homework assignments and make tests and you know, conduct activities and things like that and you all are occupying the status of student, and there are certain behaviors expected of you. Listening to the lecture, taking the notes, doing the homework assignments, taking the tests, okay? So the role is the behavior, the status is the label, okay? Now, every person, like I said before, occupies several statuses. For example, yeah, I'm a teacher right now, but that's not my only status. I'm also a husband, I am a male, I'm 28 years old, I'm a brother, 
I'm an uncle, I'm a friend, I'm a coach. Okay, so I have all these different statuses that I occupy in my life. Now, some of those statuses I have direct control over, right? I chose to be a teacher. I chose to be a husband. I'm choosing to be your friends, okay? And then there are also some statuses that I have no control over that were ascribed to me. I couldn't, I can't control my age. I can't control my race or my ethnicity or, um, you know, my gender. Okay. So some statuses I control, some statuses I have no control over. So we have to categorize those two. So the two types of statuses that we can categorize are known as ascribed status and achieved status. So looking at ascribed status first. An ascribed status is in a status that is assigned to you beyond your control, right? So like I said, I cannot control my race, okay? Um, so this status that I have of a white male, I did not earn. It was not based on my ability or my effort or something that I accomplished, but it is, is a status that I occupy nonetheless, okay? So that would be two very quick examples of ascribed status. You know, other ones could be, you know, brother. I, you know, I didn't choose to have sisters. I didn't choose to be an uncle. I didn't choose to be a son, but I occupy those statuses nonetheless, okay? We also have achieved statuses. These statuses that you occupy, that you have acquired through your own direct efforts. You have done something in order to earn this status or to earn this label. So maybe you're a basketball player or maybe um, you're a musician, right? Those statuses you have worked at in order to achieve. You have control over this status. Now, obviously there are going to be limitations. You know, um, I could practice basketball every single day for the rest of my life, and I'm still not going to be an NBA basketball player. I'm not very good at basketball at all, right? So there are limitations. However, I can choose to join an adult basketball league if I wanted to, right? So when we're allowed to all be together again, and, and hopefully when this pandemic is over, if I really have a strong desire to play basketball, I could go to the rec league, join an adult league, and you know, then I would have the status of basketball player. Or you know, maybe I wanna perform at the talent show next year, and I wanna sing something. Yeah, I'm not gonna be Taylor Swift. I'm probably not gonna get a recording label, but I could sing in that moment, and I'd be occupying the status of musician, okay? So you've done something to earn an achieved status. Now, an achieved status can be positive and it can also be negative, okay? But the list is also endless. We have this endless list of achieved statuses. You know, uh, I have the status of teacher right now, but maybe I decide next year that I wanna do something different. And so I find a new job. You know, I quit teaching and I go, you know, I don't know, work at Starbucks or something, right? Um, I can choose to be a husband, like I said before, right? You all can work very hard in high school and ultimately receive that high school diploma. You can choose to play a sport. You can choose to, uh, you know, be a part of the spring musical, for example. These are all achieved statuses that you can control. But like I had alluded to before, some of them can be good and some of them can be negative. Yeah, you can earn the status of high school graduate. You can also earn the status of high school dropout. You can earn the status of, you know, um, National Honor Society, but you can also earn the status of, you know, being expelled or uh, going to jail even. Okay, so we have to understand that it can be both positive and negative. Okay, and so that's just a very brief introduction to status. Um, 
Next time I go into notes, we're going to be looking at this concept of role. So I'm not going to get really into it right now. I want to stick just with this concept of status. And there is one small homework assignment that I want you to do with this. Um, so it's on your Google Classroom page. And you're going to see this uh, chart right here. Okay. And so what I want you to do is I want you to put your name in this center circle. And then I want you to identify the ascribed statuses that you occupy in your life, as well as the achieved statuses that you occupy. And so you're just going to fill in the circles um, in notability, examples of ascribed statuses and examples of achieved statuses that you occupy in your life. So I want you to fill that out on notability, turn that in on the classroom by Friday at midnight, and you're done for the week. Um, I also will be having office hours on Friday. If you have any questions, by all means, you can hop on there and ask me, or if you just wanna chat and talk, I'll be there too. So hopefully all these notes made sense to you. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email or to reach out. Hope you're all doing well and I will talk to you soon. Take care guys, have a good night.